Hello everyone and welcome to your 8th C++ tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to create a random number generator now this is going to be a slightly longer tutorial but uh, to it should be quite fun so to start off with what you need to do is add another one of these up here and this is called an include file what this does is it links your C++ file to an external file so the one that we're going to link to is called the C standard library and you type this in by saying C, STD, for standard, and then library, L-I-B. And then we close that. And now down here, when we start programming, we're going to create a for loop. So the reason why we're going to use a for loop is so we can get, uh, make the loop run for a certain amount of times. So therefore we're going to get a random number as many times as we like. So to start off with, I'm going to make it as for with int x and we'll set this equal to 0 and then we'll say x is less than 15 for 15 random numbers and then as normal in 4 loops x plus plus so now we'll make the body for this and what we need to do is display the random number so to start off with we're going to use c out as always to display and now to make random numbers we're going to use a function called rand which is part of the C standard library so rand and for the moment it's going to take no parameters and then we'll end the line so what this is going to do is it's going to create a variable called x and every time that it's less than 15 it's going to run this loop so it's going to run it 15 times and we're going to display a random number so if we build and run like we should have 15 random numbers and they look pretty random, they're all different but as you can see if we build and run this again they're exactly the same, so 41, 1, 8, 4, 6, 7, run it again 41, 1, 8, 4, 6, 7, so every time we run it they're going to be the same and if you want a random number generator then this really isn't going to work and also if you're say using a random generator for say a dice you don't want the numbers to be massively big like in tens of thousands you want it between one and six so to start off with we're going to try and um, make it between one and six and the easiest way to do this is to add the percent sign and then six and what this means is modulus six and what this means is it's going to divide the numbers by six and then give you the remainder so it's always going to be 0 through 5 for them. And we don't want 0 through 5, we want 1 through 6. So we want to add 1 to everything there. So if you put everything there in brackets like this, and then put 1 plus in front of it, what that will do is it will take the random numbers, and to start off with it will add 1 to them, and then it will divide it by 6 and give you the remainder and normally that would be 0 through 5 but this time it's going to be 1 through 6 because it's added 1 to everything and it's going to run all of this code 15 times once again so if you build and run we've now got all the numbers between 1 and 6 but once again it starts off 6655 five, build and run again 6655 6655 five, five, five. so it's still got the same problem of that we can't get the numbers to generate randomly they will want but then that's it and the reason why this is a computer can't create a truly random number a computer just has a random well not random but a really complicated algorithm that appears random to us but to a computer it's just a bit of code that it runs to make apparently random numbers so to make our program more random we're going to include what's called a seed and to do this above our code we're going to type s rand and then within brackets we're going to put a random number, so for example 41. Then we're going to put our semicolon. And what this does is, it uh, seeds a random number for the random number generator. So this time we build and run, and the numbers are different, 5565. Five, five. If we change this to something else, say 12, we get 6151. One. And again if we change this to say... 13, build and run, build and run, and we have 4313. Three. So the numbers are different, but once again, if we keep it the same, 4313, three, keep it the same again, 4313. Three, three. 
so it's better, but it's not quite what we want. So to help us, we're going to include something else. So once again, include, and then C time. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to access the time built into our computer. So the reason that this can help us is we're going to use some, instead of using srand and then a random number, we're going to srand time and then in brackets zero. And what this does is it seeds the random time and the time that's random is one from uh, a long time ago and it counts a number of seconds from then. So this time it will put the amount of seconds from ages ago, it's somewhere around the 1970s, something like that, I'm not quite sure, but it's a long time ago, that it will seed from. So it's going to take the amount of seconds from then, now it's going to add 1 to all of them, and then divide it by 6 and give us the remainder, so the number's going to be 1 through 6, and then display all of those numbers. And because the time is always changing, it should be random every time you run the program. So now if we build and run, we have 11616, build and run, 22526, and it's looking pretty good so far. And once again, 42345. So we're getting random numbers every time. And I'll just explain this one more time. We started off by creating a for loop using an integer called x, which is going to go through 15 times. This x is less than 15 and it starts at 0. So 1 less than 15 is 14, 0 through 14 is 15 times and every time the loop runs it will add 1 to x until it gets up to less than 15. Now it's going to display a random number that's going to be added 1 to modulus 6 and once again that's because it's divided by 6 and gives it the remainder and now it's going to end the line and keep running that 15 times and it's going to display the random number from a seeded time from a while ago that's going to be a number of seconds from then and it's going to seed that time and it will give us truly random numbers like this. Thanks for watching, I hope that this tutorial helped you. In future tutorials we'll be using this to make games, you know, things like uh, slot machines which I'm going to do in the next tutorial, so look forward to that. Please like the video and visit my website in the description. Thanks for watching, goodbye.